This is Greg Troutwine with Maritime Reporter TV, and we're very pleased to be joined today by Maxie McGuire, the president of Callan Marine, for discussion on his dredging business. Maxie, to start us off, can you give a brief career biography with insights on how and why yours is a career in dredging? Well, I uh, after after discharge from the Air Force uh, uh, on a tour from Desert Storm, I, I stumbled into the job service and uh, actually found a job with the Corps of Engineers. Uh, and it was a start at the bottom uh, training program. So I accepted it because uh, I really didn't want to go to Silicon Valley and follow my communications career from the Air Force. So I started there and got trained and part of the mission of the Corps of Engineers uh, is, is navigation and flood control. So it, it had a heavy emphasis on dredging. I went through a lot of the training program, spent a lot of time on dredges in the nation. Uh, somewhere along the lines, our family started developing and I found better business opportunities in the private sector. So I, I left for a, a career uh, with the bean companies who were one of the largest dredgers in the nation at the time. And, and from there, just been fortunate to be around a lot of great colleagues and have opportunities continue to come my way. Very good. So um, can you give us a by the numbers look at Talon Marine today uh, using the metrics of your choice? We're operating four dredges today, uh, have a fifth joining uh, in about a month. And then there's two others in construction that'll come to us in the next nine months. Uh, we're about 250 employees and we started off at uh, 14 employees uh, nine or 10 years ago. Um, our customers are federal, state, and local governments, uh, as well as a very large private customer base uh, along the Gulf Coast in the oil and gas and stevedoring industries. Um, a huge portion of our customers are repeat uh, we really try to focus on the delivery and understanding their needs, dovetailing in that, uh, dovetailing a six, you know, what's, what's the success for both of us. Um, our company, um, all of our staff comes from seasoned uh, positions and about 75% of our management team, uh, we've worked together somewhere along the line in my career. So again, really fortunate to align with people culturally and then get behind the walls here where we're, we're, you know, we're family oriented, we're people centric, and uh, it makes uh, it makes chasing the mission that much easier. You know, I know you mentioned uh, uh, briefly uh, the number of judges that you have. Um, could you give us a little more details, the age of the fleet uh, and the capacity of what you actually have working now and what's coming on board? I, you know, I'm very proud that we have one of the newest fleets in the industry. Our, our oldest dredge is 11 years old. Um, our newest dredges seem to be newer every six months. Uh, so we do have a, a nice modern new fleet, uh, which really helps us in our performance. They, they, they run regularly. We don't have a lot of, a lot of major issues. Um, we've got other uh, dredges in design. Um, we've got a hopper dredge in design. Uh, outside of the hopper dredge, we're all a cutter suction dredge fleet. Uh, that's been our focus, but we're, we're broadening our horizons and continuing to try to build to what the market needs. We've got three cutter suction dredges that will enter the fleet. Uh, General Bradley will enter the fleet uh, next month. And then we're followed by the General Marshall and the General Arnold, which are all cutter suction dredges. The Admiral Nimitz will be the hopper dredge, and it's just a lengthy design, lengthy build. It's a, it's a, it's a giant dredge. It's a, it's a, it's a ship. Uh, that sails offshore to dispose of materials. So it just takes a little longer to build uh, build that. So we've got our cutter suction dredges named after generals and our hopper dredge fleet will be named after admirals. Besides the ones that you have on order that are being built that are coming into the fleet, are there any plans to order new equipment this year? Yes, we, we've also got a, a host of uh, support equipment, <clears throat> excuse me, tugboats, barges, uh, and the likes to support the dredges. By all appearances, the last few years seem to have been some of the strongest ever for the U.S. dredging market. Uh, given your long experience in the sector, how do you see it? It's, it's been a good market, and I think we have a great outlook going into the future. Um, you know, we have these deepening cycles that, that come through every 10 or 15 years, um, keeping up with, the, you know, the nation's uh, need to serve the larger ships and and of course, commerce is uh, commerce by water is the most efficient uh, means. 
So if everything we can do to support that uh, helps our economy. And I think also with with regard to you know what uh, what Congress and and the the ongoing administrations uh, have set the table for funding to invest in our infrastructure, part of which is uh, navigation and flood control, um, along with um, very healthy programs with the likes of the state of Louisiana, with uh, with CPRA, the Coastal Resources and Protection Administration in, in uh, Louisiana. So we see very healthy budgets, uh, which gives us a great outlook um, well into the future for us. When you look out ahead for the coming year, the coming two years, uh, what do you see? What are the biggest drivers for your business today and looking in the uh, immediate future? I think size and number of ships, barges and tugs moving along our waterways just creates that demand to have full depth and full width of channels to support the commerce. And the, again, the, the, the Corps of Engineers and, and uh, dock owners and things like that understand that uh, if I can have full draft, I can get a full load in that ship. So uh, the value of drafting a ship and the value of the, the full channel just, just makes for the most effective and efficient uh, movement of our commerce. You know, Maxie, obviously we're here talking uh, primarily about dredging, but I know your business uh, has uh, different parts. You got the dredging, the marine construction, environmental and levy construction and management. Uh, can you just provide a brief overview of how each of those four components contribute to your business and how you see that evolving in the coming uh, year, year, two years? Well, marine construction was a natural path for us. We do a a, a fair amount of our dredging work supports marine construction. So we've, we've aligned with a few colleagues through the years and just decided with uh, the good fortunes we've had to, to make that a place of investment. So we've, we've added uh, several crane barges to our fleet. Um, we've got a, a good backlog and uh, we, we're in a lot of respects calling on the same customer base as the dredgers. So it was a natural move for us to add that. Uh, the environmental piece, um, if we speak environmental with dredging, uh, marsh reclamation, beach construction, those types of things are a natural part of it. Some of the other things we've done, uh, post-storm, we've done cleanup activities. Um, we've executed several reef projects at Callan, and I, I think that just speaks of our entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, we did the largest uh, artificial reef project in the state of Texas. We uh, we placed a, a ship into an offshore reef area as a diving uh, uh, attraction. So just uh, you know, if it's on the water, we're all drawn to the water and look to to do what we feel is within our capabilities. Uh, we're entrepreneurial. We focus on our core businesses, but uh, really nothing's out of the box if it makes sense. Do you expect the mix of your business to essentially stay the same in the coming year or two years, or do you see uh, any impetus? Do you see do you see any of those other areas uh, kind of emerging or falling off for that matter? I think it ebbs and flows inside of the core. You know, I think we'll always be a dredge centric business at Callum and depending on funding and the needs, uh, you know, I think over the next handful of years, the, the deepening and widening cycles will happen. After that, that may slow a bit, but it'll be replaced with maintenance dredging, uh, the cycles of beach renourishments uh, in the in the Gulf and the the Atlantic side for us. We're, we're not too much a, a West Coast bunch, but we will go for the right project. It's just it's just costly to get out there. Uh, but but yeah, we're we're dredging at our core, and uh, but we'll, we'll do whatever it takes. Obviously, there's been um, some recent. Uh, infusion uh, for infrastructure uh, from the federal level. Um, is, do you see this having a positive impact on your business? Absolutely. I, you know, I, I, I sort of want to want to say that you know our country is getting old for the first time. Um, you know, we're we're three hundred odd years old, and you you look at some of the older places in the world; they've rebuilt their country several times. So it's it's now more than ever uh, it's time to pay attention to our infrastructure whatever it may be, bridges, pipelines, uh, modernizing facilities, 
and those things. So I think the, uh, you know, there's a focus on that. Uh, and you add to those bills, you've got the word of bill. We were finally seeing uh, better, better use of the intended bill. And then again, I can't, can't understate uh, what the state of Louisiana is doing. They've got a wonderful coastal restoration program. They've got a lot of funding uh, and they're, they're here for the long haul. Apart from that legislation, do you see any legislation, whether it's coming out of the federal government, whether it's coming out of the state government, that gives you the greatest cause for either hope or concern? Uh, I don't think we have concern. I think we've, we've really been given a breath of fresh air, and, and you can see what Callan's doing, and there's a lot of others in our industry that are, you know, they have the confidence to invest in our speculative business is based upon um, the comfort and certainty of funding uh, that we can we can sort of find our way and see our path um, because it's a it's a big step to to build these monsters that uh, takes a lot of projects to feed. When we look at dredge technology, you're obviously been investing in some new tonnage, uh, but when you look at the current fleet that you have. Uh, and the technology that you have on order, can you point to a technology as having the greatest positive impact on running a safe and efficient dredge operation? Uh, well, I think, uh, you know, you, you hit the nail on the head with the two things, you know, safety. We've got, a, you know, a safe workforce and then the efficiency we invest in. Um, whether it's, uh, you know, we really, you know, the, the, the newer dredges are diesel electric, so it, it helps us more with our readily available power for the best fuel burn, fuel being one of our largest uh, uh, cost items. When we look at um, our people, uh, same thing is investing in automation systems to help with fatigue, buying them the latest gear, um, and then getting into the creature comforts on the dredges. They're all, you know, just the latest and greatest um, with human comforts. Um, full internet, uh, satellite TVs, exercise rooms, uh, individual bathrooms, and just all the food that they want to eat. Um, and, and trying our best to, to have some sort of a wellness program with salads and, and some of the more healthy things. So it's not just, uh, just, just caveman eating, but, uh, but doing the best we can all around um, for our humans, our consumption. And we talk about the fuel, um, the most effective fuel burn with the latest EPA regulations allows us to um, work on the emission side of things too, which is good for our planet. Have you found it difficult to recruit people that you need to run your dredge operations? And more importantly, what do you count as the greatest asset to, keep, uh, to, to keeping them? I, I would say that it's a strain, but we're solving our problems. And, and I think that it, First and foremost, it's the network that's that we're in. Uh, everyone is connected to someone. And if we set up a culture, uh, it pollinates itself. And as I say that, I, I sit in an office and I can say that I've never worked with um, a better group of people in my life. My wish for Callan is that that makes it down to, the, to every employee but I know that uh, you know I don't get rained on. Um, I don't work in 30 degree weather. But if we don't get mad at the weather, and we work on the culture, and we we provide everything we can provide, it creates the greatest uh, workplace that we can. Um, it's always a struggle with regard to wages because you you can't keep up. Some employees will uh, make a change for a small amount of money. Uh, but we try to speak to that and say, you know, look, if you're investing in the retirement programs and healthcare programs, let's uh, let's meet your spouses. Let let them understand the value um, of everything you have. I think it served us well as a whole. Um, our retention rate is is very well. We've even had people that we've lost through the years that uh, we've nicknamed them boomerangs. They, they leave and find out that it's not so green on the other side and they come back to us. So we feel blessed when we get one back. Um, never say never, we're all humans. We communicate best we can, try to understand each other's pains and make it the best we can do. And I, I think that's all we can do. 
So can you discuss how Callan Marine is investing in technology or technique to help minimize its environmental footprint? Absolutely. Well, we more and more we see the you know the specifications on jobs that come out um, request where they can better equipment. Um, with the confidence to invest, I think it's not just limited to Callan, but the but the dredging contractors themselves with the confidence to invest, they're investing in newer equipment um, because it is, it's, it's better anyway. If, if you even disregard the environment piece, um, the fact that you're efficient drives your programs. So like I said, as we, as we invest, they sort of go hand in hand. Um, every time we build a new boat, every time we remodel something, we invest in those efficiencies and controls and, 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 and things to, to be a better steward of our environment, to be a better steward of our employees, whether it's noise or whatever it may be, looking at it as a, as a whole. What do you consider to be the greatest challenge to Callan Marine to run a safe, efficient, and profitable dredging operation today? 100% it's about the people. You, know, you, you build the right equipment uh, first, and, and we've done that. We've got uh, you know second to none uh, owners here that, that believe in doing it right the first time. So we build the right piece of equipment. After that, it's 100% of the people. It's giving them the tools, the confidence, and the culture, and they create the successes. When you look at the past year or something that's ongoing now, can you discuss one project that was particularly interesting, particularly challenging, uh, or just a project that you think best illustrates uh, Callan Marine's capabilities? Well, I think we, you know, we made a step change uh, with the addition of the MacArthur. We, we've got a lot of people in here that come from the large dredge market, but when we built the MacArthur, she's the first large market dredge, and we we won a job from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife to re-nourish Breton Island, which is offshore in Breton Sound, south of New Orleans. So we had this big job to to rebuild, I think, the second oldest uh, wildlife sanctuary sanctuary in our country working offshore with the brand new dredge. So it was quite the challenge, all hands on deck. Um, and we, we ended up getting, you know, some lumps and bumps, a few storms hit us and had to evacuate and things. But uh, we got to the end, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife's got a good job. It was satisfactory. Uh, and through the lumps and bumps, we feel proud of our success and uh, successful in our step change. You know, looking ahead by market sector, by geographic region or by both. Where do you see the greatest opportunities for Callan Marine in the coming 12 to 24 months? I think I, you know, we're, a, we're a pretty uh, uh, mobile bunch. Uh, it just depends on where the projects happen. You know, for the most part, uh, there's a turtle window on the East Coast. So, so rebuilding beaches tends to happen in the winter months. Um, in, the, in, the, in the turtle window when you can't work, they do a lot of the maintenance trading. So we tend to move from the Gulf to the East Coast quite regularly. I think the work's gonna to continue to focus around our, our waterways and harbors to, to work on the infrastructure. And I don't see a pause in the beach renourishments because that's frontline protection for everyone. That's excellent. Again, truly appreciate your time and uh, I look forward to talking to you again in the future. You got it. And I was gonna tell you if, you, if you can free your schedule this summer, got the WIDA National Convention here in Houston. So it's in our backyard. If you could make your way here, we'd be happy to show you around and get you a tour of a dredge and, uh, and introduce you to some more, some more dredgers and marine people if you, if you got an open spot in your calendar.